Hello and welcome to the Creative Network. Hopefully we're coming through loud and clear. Um, so every month we uh, meet up. Uh, over the past eight or nine months, of course, it's all been online um, to to have the Creative Network. And it's a conversation with a Somerset-based artist. Um, last month we met with a video filmmaker, uh, Terry Flaxton, and uh, we have a different artist each month. It's usually an artist that's experimenting in some way with digital media. Um, and this uh, Creative Network is brought to you by Ignite Somerset, which is a project that's managed by Somerset Film and funded by Arts Council England. And um, we're based at the Engine Room in Bridgewater in Somerset. My name is Richard Tomlinson. I think I didn't manage to say that bit. Um, today, we're going to be having a conversation with Bronwyn Coe. Um, and it's funny, I, I think I remember meeting with Bronwyn quite a few years ago uh, when I first started working on the Ignite Somerset project, I think. And um, I think Bronwyn uh, requested an Ignite Somerset artist session. And um, I think that's right. Anyway, we met and we, we, we had a chat about digital media and then our paths haven't crossed for quite some time. And then just recently, uh, I had a chat with Bronwyn about the idea of making some images that we could project onto our building, the engine room, this December. And it occurred to me that Bronwyn would be a great person to speak to at the Creative Network. And actually, Bronwyn has been really busy over recent years um, experimenting with creative technology um, and digital technology uh, with her Botanical Delights project. But you don't need to hear it from me because uh, we've got Bronwyn here with us this evening. Um, so hopefully if all the technology works well, um, I can move myself just to the corner here of my screen. And with the click of a button, hopefully we'll see Bronwyn. Here she is. <laughs> Hi, Bronwyn. How are you today? I'm fine, Richard. Hi, how are you? Yep. Uh, so um, we're going to have a look at some of your work, um, obviously, um, the Botanical Delights work, and we're going to just have a general chat about your practice and um, your interest in the natural world. And I'm sure it's going to be a really interesting conversation. If you're watching on YouTube and Facebook and you've got a question for Bronwyn, do put it in a comment and I'll see if I can find it and um, I'll ask Bronwyn at the end. So um, we'll start with a with a, a question. Uh, tell us more, Bronwyn, about your fascination with the macro details found in the natural world. Yeah, um, well, it started probably about eight, ten years ago. Um, my son bought me a digital camera. I don't know whether it was when they first came out. Um, it was a fairly basic thing, but um, and I didn't want to take photographs of landscapes or pretty cottages and fields or anything. I wanted to take photographs of flowers because that's been my background, having a plant nursery for many years. Um, but I didn't also didn't want to just take pictures of flowers. I wanted to take detailed pictures. Um, so I had a lot of fun doing that, but I was frustrated all the time because. I couldn't get the detail. I couldn't get right into the flowers um, that I wanted. I, I mean, I persevered for several years. And then quite by, uh, I, I, obviously people said, well, you know, if you buy a, 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 a different lens and a tripod and all this, you can do it. Well, I didn't want to do that. A, I, I'm hopeless with technology and cameras. Uh, and B, I didn't, I kind of felt it was too contrived in a sense, um, having my bottom up in the air and my head down in the undergrowth and uh, trying to balance a tripod and just hopeless. Um, and then quite by accident, I can't even remember why I had a scanning machine on my desk, um, but quite by accident, I, I, I think I pressed the button or something and something was on the scanning plate. And I thought, oh my God. Um, and that was the beginning. Um, and that was about eight, eight, nine years ago. Um, and basically, I've, I've gone from there and it, it's just been the most magical journey. Um, 
for a long time very complicated and uh, well not complicated but I had to learn techniques to get the effect that I wanted um, so it took it took a lot of patience which I, I usually don't have any patience for anything so it was quite interesting I had patience for it um, and and that's what happened um, and what I wanted to what I was trying to get was to, to see what we don't see, seeing the unseen, um, what's either hidden within a flower or plant or what we just look at in passing but don't actually understand that it's there. So it's about the interiors um, and plant interiors, I guess, comes from other interests in that I was a homeopath and counsellor and so kind of that's linked into the idea of the interiors of people and also into houses um so this whole sort of concept of looking within um there's a lovely uh quote by john berger um, where he says read natural appearances as texts um and that absolutely fits what i've been trying to get at it's not just about uh, being clever and getting the inside of a seed head blown up so that it, well, it might not look like a seed head anymore, but it's it's a little jewel of of beauty. Um, it is about it is about some kind of language, um, and that's why I I think on my on my uh, business card that I had for some time, which is a sort of folding thing. Um, I headed it Jewels of Botanical Alchemy. Um, and that also uh, tracks back to my obsession with medieval stained glass. And I've done a lot of um, painting work, which again goes back quite a long way, using which I call deconstructed stained glass. And it's, it's a similar idea, concept of um, that jewel like. Uh, colour and exquisiteness of medieval stained glass, extraordinary colours. Um, and, and likewise with, with the flowers. Um, so there was, there was some continuity. I always feel I'm spurring out all over the place, but actually there was a link. Anyway, yeah. So, so in a way, it almost happened by accident. Um, and then you started to hone it and clarify what it is that you the process involved for you and now you're quoting john berger so oh dear <laughs> okay so um let's uh, have a look at some of the images uh that that um from the botanical delights series and if, if you want to uh Bronwyn, you can just talk us through some of the images um I've arranged these uh, in threes um, because I know that uh, we're collaborating together at the moment on the idea of projecting a triptych of, uh, of, of images, of constantly changing images uh, over at the engine room. So uh, we're about to have a look at some threes. Um, so let's, let's do so. Um, I'll move myself out of the way. Yes, I mean... <sighs> These, the two on the outside um, are both the same plant. It's, it's called Grevillea. Um, and when they're on the plant, they're, they're quite tiny little things. Um, but get them on the scanner and blow them up and they become these little dancers, um, especially, well, like the one on the left with in, pair, in a pair and the one on the right, which is a kind of group dance as a troupe. Um, and in the middle is is the gorgeous, oh, gorgeous um, you, Texas, um, the, the the ripe berry and the immature berries um, on a branch. OK, I'll, well, we'll have a look at a couple more of these sequences, these triptychs. Yeah, um, got all sorts of... Um, some things that have got a lot more movement uh, on the left you've got hammer um the winter flowering shrub 
uh, which has all these extraordinary sort of ribbons of flowers and then, um, well, petals, in fact, the yellow bits of petals. And then you can just see the little central um, flower with the stamens. The middle one is a, a hellebore uh, that's going for a dive. Um, and the right one is an immula, which again is kind of quite active. So they're all kind of, well, they are all actually, it's, it strikes me they're all quite active uh, images. Yeah. Um, you're testing me now, Richard, on the names of all these things. Uh, on the left is a lily. Um, I've done quite a lot of lilies of different kinds of lilies. Uh, and there's just something completely magic to me about the seeds kind of bursting out of the seed pod. I have to say, absolute nightmare to scan um, to get it to work. Um, but uh, it did. Uh, the middle one is the, the really extraordinary, uh, slightly vulgar um, uh, magnolia seeds. Um, magnolia set extraordinary seed heads whatever variety of magnolia some some are, are really gross well gross in a, quite an attractive way but most peculiar um and uh but very very effective and the right one is 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 the simple foxglove um the inside of the foxglove um and that's kind of this is the thing about celebrating what what we take for granted as well i mean okay the lily and the magnolia are different but the the, the foxglove, um, and if you think of uh, buttercups and daisies, a fallen tulip petal inside of a poppy seed head, cow parsley seed, we kind of just look at these things, you know, if we're walking past them on a, in a hedgerow or something, um, yeah, and we see them and say, oh, there's a foxglove or there's a, there's a, a, a cow parsley or whatever. But actually, when you take them to pieces and put them on the scanner and blow them up, there's such a there's a there's this great hidden world of extraordinary form and structure going on. Okay, um, let's get back to a couple of questions. Uh, that that magnolia, when I first saw it, it's quite alien-like. I, I made that's what made made me think anyway. Um, so uh, you've scanned literally hundreds, possibly thousands, actually uh, natural objects over recent years. Um, and you mentioned that the resulting works are similar to Dutch flower paintings and her early herbal charts. And that got just got to me to thinking about your sort of scientific motivation. So has the process of gathering this material been purely artistic uh, or is there a scientific uh, curiosity there as well? Um, I'm not, I'm not I'm sure. sure. I think I, think I might, might be being a bit... A bit pretentious if I said that there was a scientific um, motivation. In fact, there isn't a scientific motivation. Um, it is it is a, a visual artistic motivation um, and one of inquiry um, that that just drives me forward. But then, yes, I mean, if I not so much with um, uh, the the images that are based on uh, directly on the 18th century Dutch flower paintings, the, the bigger ones, uh, but these detailed ones, um, it kind of becomes a bit scientific in terms of dissecting a, a seed head and finding what's inside. Um, because it, and, and the other thing is it's about relationship with, well, well particularly with the 18th century Dutch flower paintings, putting, putting different, because that's a, different format altogether, putting different flowers together um, to form a complete piece. Um, that is about the relationship, almost like a, a conversation between the, between the flowers. Um, so that, that's slightly different. Okay, we'll have a look at some more images. I, I don't mean to put you on the spot with these, but I, you... <laughs> oh, that's right. It's not a qu it's not a quiz, but no, no, I'll uh, you, tell you, you if do... I can't remember because I won't be able to remember them all. Let's have a look at some more of these images. Um... Yeah, tell us tell us what we're looking at here, Bronwyn. Uh, well, on the left is the pomegranate punica. Um which are such beautiful things. I mean, I don't often buy them and actually they're looking usually quite, look quite scabby in the supermarket. 
but they are extraordinarily beautiful things. And when you cut them open, as I'm sure, you know, you all do, um, all those seeds packed in all that juiciness and redness and uh, something, a joyful little, well, not very little. Um, and that one I've, I've emphasised by putting a lot of shadow around it. So it kind of really glows out of the, out of the screen. Um, the middle one, I think is called Dianella. It's a very unusual shrub. Uh, and I have to confess, I nicked that seed off something. I think it was at Abbotsbury um, Subtropical Gardens um, because of the color, for goodness sake. I mean, honestly, what a color. Uh, and that's just a transection of, 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 um, of the seed head. Um, but I, oh, the color just drives me out. And the right one is uh, an abutilon. Um, uh, which is really coming out of the, again, coming out of the screen. Uh, I think they all go quite well together as well. So you, you talked about um, how on the pomegranate and, and that this one in the middle here, you you made the image pop a little bit more by working with shadow. So is this, you, you know, when you first started chatting the, this afternoon, you, you talked about how you switch the scanner on almost by accident and thought, oh my goodness, look at this. Is this then, are we now in a process of you honing and uh, sort of um, developing, you know, your skills in, in digital image making? Yeah, yes, I suppose so. Yes, because certainly all, all the early ones for, for a long time. Uh, I mean, I was absolutely so excited and, 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 and um, thrilled with them. Uh, but when I look back on them now, I think, oh, my God, <laughs> they look really uh, a bit crass. Um, but so I developed a way of, of yeah, of working with them so that, A, they became, I, I blew them up more, uh, so they were higher resolution. Um, and also using a black backdrop um, and then deciding what part of the scanner I used and which way they faced and, uh, yeah, I mean, this is what's taken, I mean, perhaps, you know, more technological people would have done it in a flash. It didn't, I didn't do it in a flash. It took, it took, it took ages um, to kind of get what I wanted, but I just kept persisting. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll put another image up. Um, and then if you could tell us about that, that would be wonderful. Um... Okay, uh, you've got me stuck on the left hand one. I can't remember. Um, 8,500 images, I can't remember them. No, I can't remember it. Uh, but I mean, I love it because all those little spiky bits, I think they're lovely. Uh, the middle one is one of my absolute, absolute, absolute favorite subjects, which is the spindle. Um, as I'm sure lots of people have seen in the hedgerows. Um, probably a bit late now, but certainly September, October. Um, these little pink uh, seed heads in groups hanging off branches in the hedgerow. Um, I mean, some people have trees. I mean, there are sort of varieties of them where they're uh, a bit more specialised. Uh, and what I discovered was uh, gathering them at just the right time and dissecting them and dissecting them in, in at different uh, angle so whether it was transverse or, tra or I don't know what the word is but horizontally or vertically um, you've got these extraordinary interiors uh, like little jewel sweeties um, and I, I just think there's the, oh I just love them absolutely love them uh, so there's lots of those I've got I've got I've got masses of those on the computer and the right one is the inside of a poppy head imm an immature poppy head so before they go brown while they're still green um, again, cut across uh, and then zoomed in to see all these beautiful little pearl-like things, like something from under the sea, which are all the seeds, uh, which we know very well. Once they mature and drop into the garden, you've got hundreds of uh, poppies. Oh, they're really wonderful, Bronwyn. Um, so um, sometimes your close-up work... Um, just the fact that you know they are close up there's abstraction going on there they're quite abstract at other times uh, we see clearly what's in the frame um are you trying to encourage 
your audience to be intrigued by your images and ultimately engage more with nature? Um, yeah, I mean, the idea of, of what I said at the beginning, of what we don't see, what we take for granted, and we look, but we don't actually really see, um, and, and the exquisiteness of these things, and the, co- uh, the, the extraordinary structure, the patterns, textures, complex designs. Um, it's wanting to uncover and reveal the extraordinary beauty of plant life. Um, and the often complex, when, when you get right inside, the complex, I use the word slightly wrongly, but engineering. Uh, I mean, my son's an engineer. And so I'm familiar with the beauty and ingeniousness and precision of machinery. Uh, so there's a correlation there in terms of how things work. Uh, and how things are constructed but in the natural you know machinery is constructed by man but plants are are just there doing it and it's like god (laughs) and so I, i just i just desperately want to share that wonder that sense of wonder um uh and discovery so um you've already talked about how these experiments with the digital process were almost accidental and you know you're a painter photographer writer as well as a plants woman and gardener um so is is the digital process you you've kind of already answered it i think you, you you've already said that you can get infuriated by the digital process is it basically a means to an end for you yes I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't set out, I wouldn't have set out at the beginning by thinking, oh, I'd love to use a scanner and learn how to use a scanner uh, and um, get my scanner talking to my computer and uh, whatever. Absolutely. I'm sorry. You know, I know I'm talking, I'm talking to the technological king of, of Bridgewater, but I'm not a technological person at all. Uh, I've, I've sailed by the seat of my pants with all this um, and made it, made it work. Um, and probably, you know, to people who are technologically skilled, uh, maybe it, it all seems quite simple and basic. I don't know. I mean, I just do what I do because I love it. Um, I have to do it. No, it's interesting because, um, yeah, the, the digital process is one of processes and it is oftentimes quite methodical you do this to achieve this and and so on Um, but I love the idea of um, and it's not really anything to do with how complex a process is or not but just the idea of accidentally happening upon a process I think is is just really lovely and um, I mean there's a there is a the images are beautiful and they are highly detailed and they they're saturated colours they're also um, they also kind of indicate your obsession, I think, with <laughs> with scanning thousands and thousands uh, of these things. And they're also quite playful. They're quite fun, aren't they? Um, like you've indicated one already that looks a little bit like something you might buy. You might find it in, you know, your ten penny mix of sweets, <laughs> which I think is uh, really lovely. Let's have a look at some more images. Um, let's move to this one uh tell us about these if you can uh Bronwyn uh yeah the left hand one that was a that was an extraordinary revelation as lots of them have been um actually I suppose that's that's a word it's you know (laughs) these these delightful little things are revelations this was a hollyhock seed um again you probably know hollyhocks have a mass of uh seed heads up their stem uh which they set um uh, and they're all clothed in 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 an outer layer, uh, but when you take that off, uh, you find these beautiful little things. And this one really was this extraordinary. It looked as if it had been gilded, um, uh, and I loved it for that. In, in fact, it's not a desperately clear thing because I think it's not a very high resolution. It was an earlyish one. Um, the middle one, I think, is a centauria. Um, uh, which is a cornflower, a, a variety of cornflower. Uh, and again, 
it looks as if it's gilded. I haven't, you know, I, I, I sharpen them. I take them into photos on the computer. I don't use Photoshop, um, so I should have said that. Um, I just use um, Apple Photo um, editing tools. Uh, so I just take it in and perhaps up the contrast a bit, sharpen it, uh, but I don't change the colour. Um, so that these are true colours to the to what I was scanning. And the right, oh God, what is the right one? No, pass, can't remember. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Thank you so much. Um, like you said, you you know, you've made thousands of these things. So um, <laughs> it's no surprise that the odd one um, uh, might escape your memory what, what the actual... Uh, name of the object is. Um, let's have a look at uh, another uh, of these triptychs. Okay, so on the left um, are the amazing ginkgo leaves, the maiden hair tree, um, one of the oldest trees on the planet. Um, extraordinary, extraordinary stories about ginkgos. It's actually a conifer. Uh, you'd never believe it was a conifer, but um, in the in the um, uh, classification, it is actually conifer, um, and it, obviously conifers are usually green, and they have needles, and they don't well largely lose their needles and um, metasecoli their needles, but uh, ginkgo do lose these um, extraordinary shaped leaves, um, and they do go the most wonderful colours, um, and produce a carpet under the tree, um, a golden carpet. Uh, it is a wonderful tree. Um, and the middle one is, oh, it's an Eliagnus. Um, and again, just delightful. Some more immature seeds, the green ones, and then they're, uh, as they go up the stem, they're ripening. Um, but I just love their, their speckled. Again, they're a bit like sweeties. And the right one is, again, one of my great favourites. It was... Uh, a lily called Cardia crinum, um, which has massive seed heads. Um, what would they be, about five, six inches long? Um, and they're very well protected. Um, but I, I persevered with these. Um, again, they're bursting out of the, out of the actual seed head. Uh, but I also scanned a lot of them within the seed head. Uh, and they really, 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 um, this one doesn't convey it, but they really look like the inner workings uh, of a piano or an organ or something. There's just something incredibly musical. And um, I mean, uh, th this does look like seeds, but some of the some of the images, again, it's one of my favourites. So I, I've, I've, I've took a lot of scans of it in different forms. Um, but it is, and, and again, the colour hasn't been adjusted. They, they are golden, golden seeds. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, you, you're you're finding kind of uh, this, this is like visual metaphors going on here, isn't there? You've already talked about uh, it's like the inside of a piano, or you've talked about the engineering, and you, you actually said it's probably not the right word, but in a way. It seems quite appropriate somehow <laughs> when we look at these in great detail. They are kind of incredible uh, works of engineering. I'm going to ask you um, just one more question, Bronwyn. Um, well, maybe a couple more. Uh, do your artworks serve a purpose beyond being objects of beauty? Is there potentially an environmental message here? Um, you know, is there is there a, something going on here about conservation and biodiversity, for example? I think if I'm honest, I'd say no. Uh, and that doesn't mean that I'm not um, incredibly concerned about um, the planet and conservation and the environment. Uh, well, I'd prefer to call it nature rather than the environment, but yeah, environment, nature, whatever. Um, but I don't, I don't see these images. I mean, maybe something would, could come of them. I don't know. But I ha I, 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 when I'm doing them, I'm not thinking... Um, oh, this is going to, you know, be an advert for biodiversity or whatever. Um, it's a, it's about it. Loosely, yes, because it's about celebrating the natural world, 
celebrating the beauty and extraordinary complexity of everything around us. Um, so from that point of view, loosely, yes, but technically not really, no. Uh, we're going to, um, I'm going to ask you one more question, which is, uh, what is it that you're currently working on? I know that you're working with me on something. I can talk a little bit about that too. Um, and then um, we'll have a look at a couple more pictures, including um, you sent me on an email uh, earlier today, uh, just a screenshot of some of your early, early uh, scans, which will demonstrate, I suppose, you know, the, the, um, progress that you've made uh, in, in your in your process and, and developing your process. So um, we're working together at the moment um, uh, to create some projected images that we are going to illuminate the engine room with in Bridgewater uh, through December. Um, uh, so if you happen to be in Bridgewater in December um, and the engine room is just down the road, from the town hall on High Street, we'll have projections on the cafe windows and, and on our windows of Studio Two, um, facing outwards into the street. So you don't even need to enter the building; uh, you'll be able to see them from outside. Um, and we've got three artists involved in making sequences of images for us. Bronwyn being one of them, and uh, it's been good working with you, Bronwyn, to look at how we can pair images together and create three images together um, and I'm looking forward to projecting some of those um, in December. So you're working with that on me, are you involved in other things too? Um, I'm having a pause because um, I'm not long finished doing open studios um, which uh, I was actually open from a Covid friendly appointment system um, and uh, that was involved with um, also uh, an old building, outbuilding that was opposite my very tiny co cottage, um, which I spent the last year um, uh, restoring. Um, and it's been a labour of love and blood and sweat and tears as well. Um, and Open Studios was kind of a, a, a lovely celebration um, of both finishing the building, more or less anyway, um, and putting uh, new work on display um, and having visitors, which was which was absolutely great. Uh, but to be honest, um, uh, at the moment, I've just my my muse has gone on holiday um, because uh, I'm really tired. <laughs> um, but, but part of that exhibition, um, which I've been the work I've been working on since the end of last year, I suppose. Um, is a project, an ongoing project called the Theatre of Trees, which kind of sounds like it's something totally different from what we've just been looking at and talking about. Uh, and it is. Um, and if we're talking about um, the state of the world and the planet and everything else, then um, the Theatre of Trees is about that. Uh, is it, it is about, well, it's about the trees um, and the importance of trees. Uh, so I'm doing all sorts. I have been doing all sorts of stuff with trees and bark, and uh, and that was also linked in with um, Somerset Artworks project uh, called Somerset Reacquainted, uh, which um, was great fun, and I think was a great help to a lot of people um, in lockdown, the first lockdown, and ended up with a really lovely exhibition at Gasmy Rural Life Museum. Uh, which um, sadly, of course, had to close for this second lockdown, but I, I gather is going to be extended into January. Um, so, and that was that was all about bark. Um, so that's what I was working on. And at some point, uh, when my muse comes back from holiday, um, I hope to um, get back to that. But uh, I mean, the flower thing is always there. Um, I mean, today I've just. I went for a walk with my dog and I came back with some wild lamium and some cornus from the hedgerow uh, and I couldn't resist it. And I put them on the scanner and did some scans. Um, so just to, a few more to add to the eight and a half thousand. Um, it's an obsession. It's an obsession, Richard. I can't, I can't kick it. That's brilliant. 
there's much worse obsessions that you could have i'm sure okay <laughs> let we'll, we'll have a um, uh we'll round off in a minute we'll just have a last look at a couple of uh, of other images and then um and then then uh we'll have a look at the the <laughs> thumbnail that you sent me earlier which was of, of some of your earlier material and in fact um let's have a look at a couple of single images i think um see if we can bring one up yeah yeah these sorry um these are um canna seeds um which again are like a little troop of dancers um sometimes it's really nice to have groups of the same thing um apart from the else to show how the diversity even even you know these are all just off one flower stem um but they're all slightly different uh but they're all in relationship um and i do think of them as little troops of dancers sometimes or you know out of theatre and the other thing is sometimes it feels a bit like a musical score um like each each thing is singing its own theme um one unspoken language i don't know perhaps i'm getting too fanciful but um that's galtheria which is a acid loving shrub um again that produce it i mean these little things all sprouting off one stem i mean they are tiny um but even so when they're, they're blown up you kind of i don't know they're just um it's again they're in relationship but but how nature's designed them so that they they're not bumping into each other they're all spaced along the stem uh it's just magical Okay, uh, we'll we'll just look at one more image. I think, which is this is this um, image of examples of your earlier uh, earlier work. It's just I was just it just occurred to me that there's so many thousands of these images, and I feel like you've sent me quite a few recently that we're going to be you know <laughs> working up for these projections. But of course, that's a tiny tiny fraction of your output, isn't it? Um, let's just have a look at this last uh, image. All I can say is kind of ugh, really, because they look they look terrible. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, this is eight years ago, um, and but the fascinating they still they're still kind of I guess exploring exploring the form and the design. Um, but yeah, I mean the the quality is terrible. The, 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 yeah. Uh, and I hadn't well I just hadn't learned the techniques of how to do it um, but the but the interest and the obsession was there um, and I was just drawn into them but yes when I look at and I mean as you could see a lot of them were just black and white because I hadn't even worked out the colour thing properly um, and there are some shells down the bottom I have I have actually scanned up other things a bit but not not a lot um, but yes there's a funny old mixture of leaves and flowers and seed heads and things there but uh, yeah, so it was the beginning of the journey, beginning of the journey. OK, um, we'll I think we'll um, round it off there, Bronwyn. Thank you so much uh, for chatting to us this evening. Uh, and um, if you want to see more of Bronwyn's work, because you know, I've got quite a lot on my computer, not as many as Bronwyn's got on hers. But um, there's quite a few images that we're we're. Uh, piecing together to for these projections so if you want to see more of these images on a large scale and actually seeing them on a large scale i imagine is a is a whole different thing altogether to seeing them on a you know um on facebook or youtube screen um then uh pop along to the engine room in december and um as i say we won't be showing these every night but i think what probably what we'll do is on social media post um, a calendar of what work we're showing on on, on which night through December. Um, so I think we'll we'll round it off there. Bronwyn, um, 
when we've chatted earlier in in the week, you, you said that your website's currently in the process of being updated. Is that ready yet, or is there anywhere online people can go to find out more? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, th- I, th- I think, I think. Um, uh, it should be there. Um, it's Bronwyn Co. Uh, sorry, www. Bronwyn Co. All one word, all lowercase. dot net. Bromwinco.net. That's easy yep. to remember. Uh, and it, it, it's still, I mean, it, it is out there, but I'm still tinkering with it. So there, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm looking forward to working with you over the coming days to get these projections together. And um, no doubt we'll actually meet up in person, hopefully someday soon. Thanks a lot, Bromwin. Thank you, Richard. It's been Great. Thank you. Right. We'll sign off there. Goodbye, everybody.